I want to talk about something a little bit different today. Small rooms and great sound. And is it possible to have both? Well, of course it is. And there are actually some tweaks, some small tweaks even, that you can do to your small space to make it sound better. I used to think that you needed like a, you know, a mansion sized room to get great sound. And I've even been in some of those expensive rooms complete with, you know, acoustic panels and diffusers and all kinds of room treatments. My vinyl room, the one I'm in, you know, right now, the one that my wife Mandy transformed into a, a listening room, it's, it's a small room. And for, I would say years, I struggled with getting the sound I wanted in this room. And it's taken a while. And while this room can't compete with one of those big, you know, expensive rooms with expensive you know, treatments, it can compete with a similar sized room with expensive treatments. And today I'm going to talk about some of the things that you can do. To get great sound, you first want to understand how sound behaves in a room. And you don't have to be an acoustic engineer either to understand this. All you have to remember is two things and you'll be golden. Direct sound and reflective sound. Direct sound is that sound which goes right from the speakers to your ears. There's nothing between them. And reflective sound is that sound which bounces off of everything. The walls, the, the ceiling, the furniture, and, and glass. It makes rooms behave like acoustic pinball machines. Those early reflections that bounce off of the walls and reach your ears shortly or immediately after the direct sound reaches your ears can make the sound in your room muddy or dull or harsh or sometimes even better if you're really lucky. So what can you do? Well, there are inexpensive things you can try. The first has to do with speaker placement. And I know we've talked about speaker placement before, but it's worth revisiting. There is no hard and fast rule, but starting with the rule of thirds is a really good place to start. But it can be tricky in small rooms. The rule of thirds involves placing your speakers a third of the way into the room and also your listening position being a third of the way into the room as well. And this gives the speakers and the sound room to breathe. Room to breathe. There's a title there. But if the rule of thirds puts you directly in front of your speakers or right on top of your speakers, try something different. Try fourths or fifths even. As a matter of fact, my speakers here, the KLH Model 5s, I have them about two feet away from the front wall. The front wall is the one that the listener is facing, the one that's right behind your speakers. And the back wall, as you can guess, is the one that's right behind your listening position. And right now, it, our listening position, the two chairs we have set up, are about two feet away from that back wall. Keeping your speakers away from the front wall does help immensely, even a little bit. It helps to avoid or mitigate that thing that's called, it's called the baffle step. And the baffle step is, is when the low frequencies are boosted by having your speaker too close to the wall. Now I'm generalizing here because there are all kinds of speakers. Some are meant to be a little bit closer to the wall, some further away, but getting it a little bit away from the wall is a great place to start no matter what your speaker is. Now, just remember, speaker placement, even small tweaks equals big impact. And adjust your listening position. Like I said, pull your listening position, if you can, away from the wall. And also try to get as centered between the two speakers as possible. And also play with toe-in. That's toe-in is when you're angling the speakers slightly towards you. It doesn't have to be directly at you, but it can be slightly towards you so that the speakers say, imagine the tweeter sound is direct. It's going to go right over your shoulders and just adjust from there. Another thing I want to mention, and it's called near field listening. Near field listening is when you're slightly closer to the speakers than maybe you initially envisioned. And remember that reflective sound I mentioned? Well, near field listening helps to minimize that because you're getting more of the direct sound with near field listening. You don't need top of the line speakers either. A smaller room can benefit from smaller speakers. Think bookshelf speakers, and you can get a great pair of bookshelf speakers that are less than, say, 500 bucks. You don't want those big tower speakers because they might be overkill for a smaller room. So consider bookshelf speakers and maybe a powered sub to go with those. 
I recently reviewed the S10 from Bucart Audio and, and it's a perfect solution. It handles those low bass frequencies in the room and you can adjust for the balance between the speakers and the sub to get a, a seamless experience and one that will really suit your small room. So what if the size of your room after doing some of these things you know, still seems to be holding your sound back? You've tried speaker placement tweaks, listening position tweaks, you've played with toe in and maybe even toe out, but still your room feels dark and muddy and bassy or maybe even harsh. Fear not, there are some do-it-yourself tweaks that can help with this. Some great strategies that you might not have thought about. Now, are there windows in the room? Maybe big windows on the sidewalls or, or even behind the listening position? Well, you can do something like thick curtains or thick drapes to cover those those windows because glass is highly reflective and Mandy did that here in the vinyl listening room over the windows so when we're listening to music we just close the drapes they're thick they're not overly thick and they're not sound canceling but they really really help and then you want to consider the floor between the listening space and the speakers is it bare floor is it wood laminate you know, that type of thing, well, that's highly reflective as well. So one thing you can do is just throw down a maybe a thick area rug. That might not completely take care of it, but it is going to help. That's what we did originally in this room. It was a laminate floor, so we had a, a thick rug that helped minimize some of those early reflections from the speakers. Didn't completely solve it, but it helped. So when we redesigned the room, we ripped out that laminate floor and put down thick carpet. That made a huge difference to the sound. So that handles floor reflections. So what about the walls? How, what do you do about wall reflections? It's not like you can just throw carpet on the walls. Well, I guess you could, but it might look ugly. So other than that, what are some things that you can do to help mitigate the reflections that are bouncing off the walls? To counter reflections on the back wall, the one right behind your listening position, you want to deaden the wall or disperse the sound. That's why you see acoustic panels that are both absorbent or those that are absorbent. And then you also see those that are diffusers. Now those can get very expensive, but there are some things that you can do to help with that without spending a lot of money. One thing is to put any kind of fabric or cloth on that wall. We use these ladders that Mandy has with I guess it blankets over, you know, over the decorative ladders and that helps. It's not perfect. And we're still looking ways, looking at ways to make it better. But another thing you can do is if you have bookshelves that you can put back there, bookshelves are perfect at dispersing sound wave reflections because the books are all different sizes. So as the sound wave hits those, it disperses. And that's exactly what diffuser panels do. Books are a perfect solution if it's possible in that room. Anything that you can do, to make the space in the room less symmetrical or flat will help. You know, move, moving furniture around, couches, chairs, bookshelves, any type of thing, even plants. Uh, you could put some floor standing plants and that's gonna help disperse the sound. You'd be amazed at what little tweaks like that will do to the room sound and those reflections. And most of all, just trust yourself, trust your ears. When you get to the point when you're listening to music in your room and you forget about trying to analyze the walls and the reflections and the harshness or the muddiness when you've actually relaxed and you're just enjoying the music, well, then you know you've nailed it. Your ears are the ultimate judge in sound quality. They are capable of perceiving an amazing dynamic range of frequencies and nuances. And we often get caught up in the equipment and the technical aspects of it. And it's really what it boils down to is your own perception and your enjoyment of the music. And you can also train your ears to be just a, a little bit more discerning. You can listen critically. You know, listen to how the instruments are separated or the, how the vocals sound and, and little tweaks. Like if you change your listening position slightly, notice how that affects the sound. Or if you move the speaker slightly, notice how it affects the sound or things like toe-in you'll begin to notice those little differences and be able to, in a sense, dial in your room to a way that makes you content and enhances your experience. Now, it's really easy to just go on autopilot, but when you actively listen, you'll begin to notice things that you didn't notice before. And it, you'll, it'll never be perfect. I mean, physics is physics. So small rooms are always going to be a difficult situation to overcome, but I promise you, you can do it. I mean, we did it here. 
not perfect. We're still making tweaks, but it is to the point where I'm actually just listening to the music and I'm not worrying about reflections or I'm not worrying about harsh treble. Things are starting to settle in. If I had a way to go back a year ago and listen to how it sounded then to how it sounds now, the differences are amazing. And really the only expense was the carpet that we put down. Could easily have been a really thick rug, but the carpet made a huge difference and it wasn't that expensive. Everything else we did, we either had laying around the house or we just ran to say Walmart or something and purchased it. And those things helped. Now I want to turn this all back to you. What are some of the things that you have done, some do-it-yourself things that you have done to improve the acoustics in your room? Reach out to me. I mean, you can get on the about page of this channel. There's a way to email me and you can do so with a picture. I'd love to see a picture of what you've done and, and how you've done it and you know, send it along with you know, where you're from. I'm going to be showcasing some of those on this channel at some point and especially in the newsletter, which by the way is free to sign up for. There's a link in the description for the newsletter. But yes, I'd love to hear from you and what you've done. And if you found any value at all in today's show, please like and subscribe. It does help the channel, especially when you, you know, hit the like button down below. And as always, thank you for being here. And until next time, take care of yourself, enjoy your records, and see you soon.